Last time I was using the electric whip. This time I'm going to be using the Valmont's whip. I guess we got something of a theme going on here. And ooh, that's a decent starting one. But only one stat says it's probably going to be replaced pretty quickly. And that's not too bad, because here's the thing. Valmont's whip has a lot of damage. I think that specifically it's a four times damage modifier when you are actually able to nail a critical. It's pretty great. However, like I was saying in the electric whip episode, don't really like this weapon all that much. And I, I'd like to say, for the longest time, that was the reasonable position to take. This weapon was not very good. Slow, getting the critical in practice felt like you were lining up a single pixel of your whip onto a single pixel of an enemy. And yeah, you got stuff like uh, survival scaling and everything like that, but it was just not enough. It, it felt like by the time you were getting the good critical damage, you could have just hit the enemy four times. However, it has been changed up, the critical is easier to get, the whip overall is faster, and of course survival just has a lot of good mutations and everything like that that makes this maybe a little bit more enticing of a run. However, that's yet to be seen. One of the other issues, of course, is the fact that there does exist a damage cap in the game. You cannot go over 99,999 damage in a single hit at this point in time. Didn't used to be the case, but that combined with the fact that bosses also only take... Yeah, 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 I'm getting out of here. Bosses will only take, uh, what, 5% of their health in a single hit, or 3% in the case of the Timekeeper. Something like a slow but hard-hitting weapon just has, doesn't tend to be the best type of weapon here. However, the main reason that you usually get to the point where you're hitting the damage cap on bosses or regular enemies is because you have so many synergies going on. We're talking like 100% on poison, 60% on bleed, 30% on uh, on fire. There's a lot of things that are not going to be coming up when it comes to a single weapon run. So, maybe that means that I can spread out my stats a little bit more, but also still hit the cap consistently. If the weapon is faster and a little bit better to use, I could easily see that being a possibility. Oh, maybe I should just go run directly into the promenade right now so I can get the time door. It's a good idea. You always want to hit the time doors or the kill doors when you're going into the next area because you get very powerful weapons out of that. When you only have a single one unlocked, that's a good head start to the run. Yep, uh... 150% versus the 100%, the choice is clear. So yeah, I don't know, maybe I can focus a little bit more on health, not worry about like trying to get the the uh, legendary item that gives me some sort of like, releases toxic cloud when it hits an enemy, or poisons the enemy just regular to get some sort of weird synergy. Something that I'm always trying to go for when it comes to single weapon runs like this. Maybe it'll just be that this alone, this weapon alone, no frills or anything like that, will be good enough. I don't know, really, I, as always, I do like, oh, come on, get up there. As always, I do like giving weapons second chances, because, hey, it makes for a good narrative. <laughs> you can be like, is he going to like the whip at the end of this? Is he going to continue hating the thing? Is he going to actually learn how to get the criticals consistently, rather than every dozen hits or so? is going to learn that apparently the whip does some pretty good breach even if you're not hitting with the critical. Well, that could also be a result of being on two cell mode, but... I don't know, point is, there is a lot of potential when it comes to a run like this. And I do like having runs that... You know, there are secondary goals to. Hey, it's one of the big things in the series where they generally tend not to do just regular runs, or at least I try not to do them tremendously often. Because I like just having it switched up. I like having some sort of reason that you would be interested in watching an episode like this. And this time, it's checking out the whip. So, uh, yeah, since I continuously forget to mention this every single time I do these episodes, I... This whip is dropped from the ugly worms, the worms that explode into a bunch of bombs in the sewers. So, you're looking for it for yourself. Just go make uh, one quick jaunt into the toxic sewers with a, with a grenade. You'll either get the swarm, biter swarm, or you will get the whip. And feel like uh, 
both of them are maybe equally not as great. But, hey, who knows? Maybe I'll get a redemption arc for the swarm as well coming up soon. They've doubled the amount of biters it spawns. They've uh, made it so that, they, that the biters now teleport with you to whatever location you're at, like actual biters do. Maybe it's good now. I don't know. I have been using it quite a few times recently and haven't found... Haven't found uh, that to be the case, but hey, I suppose we'll see. I mean, as it is, next episode in all likelihood is going to be... Uh, let's go. Is going to be uh, doing a wrenching whip if these two episodes I'm doing right now are any indication. Oh, come on. Just down there a little bit more. All right. Get these guys up here so that I can hit them a few times. I don't know if... Like, the whole vertical situation that I got going on here doesn't make that... Well, it was actually okay. I got the critical on the first hit. That's something that generally does not happen with this whip. At least in my experience. So... I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Obviously, one of the big things with this whip, then, is going to be that... It, it does do better against enemies with large hitboxes. Now, in the past... That should have included the Hand of the King, but in practice, never really felt like that actually happened. I mean, it was it, it was very strange, because the dude is like five, six times the size of you, and yet I felt like I almost never was able to get uh, criticals with any sort of consistency with this weapon. Maybe that changes today. Maybe that's also going to be the case, and the Hand just has a very... Ah, dang. And the hand just has a very unusual hitbox that does not play very well with this weapon. Ooh, legendary item. I mean, I hope it's a legendary whip, otherwise I can't take it, but... Yeah, you do feel that it is much faster right now. It used to be slow. Extremely slow, and that was probably more than anything else. It really felt like the thing that I was talking about with... Well, I guess I'm not going to take that, but I can at least sell it. Well, you never really felt like you wanted to take it, because by the time you start to get those criticals, you had already hit the enemy four times. So a four times damage modifier, not really the best. Could have actually been quite good in this build, especially because it gives me three stats. And hey, I'm talking about not focusing on a single stat here, even though I definitely, definitely am. Old habits die hard. Has that been a die hard movie yet? I mean, it must have been, right? I mean, if not, you could easily throw that into the next one. I mean, Bruce Willis has been like a good 20 years since the original Die Hard. I think that as far as a uh, stupid punny title that I have no idea how that translates into other languages. I have no idea if any other, you know, if any non-American nation is even getting the Die Hard movies. I feel like maybe... Maybe that's not one that uh, does as well on the international market, but what am I even talking about here? I don't know. Let's go to the ramparts. Hey, the ramparts are cool. I generally tend to avoid this area because, well, you get more stats and a better choice of stats when you go to other places. But hey, uh, mix it up. Mix it up. Uh, mix it up and start again. Why not? Well, there's the poisons of the enemy anyway, so... <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Old habits die hard even in terms of video games now, don't they? Oh, yeah, I also noticed that I got had 51 kills there. Really, really, really should have just waited until I was able to get the... The next door. I mean, the at best case scenario is probably... Getting a golden... Uh, another amulet, not another golden amulet, presumably. But hey, it could have been useful. Oh well, I don't know. I mean, thus far, the weapon's damage has been amazing. It's been great. I got no complaints on that. So, that could easily be the result of having a pretty decent amount of stats for the time being. At least for two cell mode. Or it could just be that this is a good weapon. I don't know, I suppose... The real test is going to be when I get to a boss now, isn't it? And, alright. Ah! 
Oh, that was a good dodge. I mean, I saw him going behind the, uh, behind me there, but I knew that if I rolled out of the way that I would lose my opportunity to kill that slasher. Was that a good decision? Well, when I say it out loud, no. But in the moment, it definitely felt right. Oh, well, let's just continue on here. This definitely seems like if the, if the damage is going to keep up like this, it might actually be worth not going for cursed chests and not putting myself in that position, but... There is kind of a question now, like, how, how much have I gotten hit during this run? Like, almost not at all. Maybe it's worth just uh, trying it out. Now then again, bombers. Who should be pretty easy to hit with a critical if... I do it right, but... Eh, I don't know. That's. I was expecting him to teleport to me. <laughs> it's... Uh, this is the old habits episode now, isn't it? Okay, okay. Well, I'm feeling less confident. Look, invisible ranged enemies, enemies that can attack me from any point on the screen. That says maybe I shouldn't mess around with getting cursed chest leaders, at least at this point in time. Just because that's a, that is a tragedy waiting to happen. In two parts. First part, first act, I open the chest. Second act, I immediately regret opening the, the chest as I get hit by an Inquisitor, a Knife Thrower, or a Bomber. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Everybody get out of here. Again, enemies do not teleport you on this mode. Motion Twin, just make it so enemies teleport you on all modes. Do it so that I don't look like a fool every time I do one of these runs. What? Balancing the game for everybody else? I don't. I don't see why that would be an issue. Uh, hey, if I got used to it, everybody else can. <laughs> uh, not supposed to be doing that. Not part of the run. I still consider dive attack to be... Wow, you can actually hit enemies on a pretty big dis... On a bigger distance than I thought you could. Guy, like That enemy was pretty well above me, and I was still able to do a decent amount of damage to them anyway. Oh, yes, and with all the whips, it goes through uh, shields, which is great. And is honestly something that makes it so that it's really worth taking into the ossuary. Take down thornies real easy with a weapon like this being that you're not going to be hit by them. However, I don't know. I mean, like I said, thus far, been pretty impressed by the weapon, but this is still early game. It's still two-cell mode. And two-cell mode would, with the amount of upgrades that I have on my forge right now does make it a lot easier. Gives me a lot more stats than you would normally get. However, that is going to change up because... You know, you're expected to have gone through later, later in the run. You're expected to have gone through the uh, ossuary, the prison depths, whatever. Gotten a lot more stats. Maybe be a little bit better. Have a more complete run, of course, too. And I do think that that's going to... The real test is going to be when I get over there. And well, just down the potion. I get one after I do the... The upcoming boss fight, so it's not going to be a terrible, a terrible loss as of just yet. As always, of course, I am thinking in terms of five cell runs, so... Knowing that I don't have to deal with malaise and everything is something that I really should be remembering a lot more. Alright, definitely going to want to take the Brutality. The current necklace that I have is, what, Brutality focused, so that as soon as I... That was weird. So as soon as I drop that, I will probably want to have the 65% health that I'm going to be losing when that happens. Wow, I actually managed to not get hit there. That was weird because I should have, if I'm being honest. As Andre 3000 would say. Uh, hmm, I don't know. Yeah, that is always a weird thing. I mean, I, I know that I, I'm the sort of person that grips a controller. I'm going to try it. I don't think I should take any more than this, but this is... I'll give it an attempt. 
<laughs> we'll see. But yeah, I'm the sort of person that grips the controller like tight when I am doing. Okay. I'm the sort of person that grips controller tight when I'm doing any sort sort of things with like uh, video games here. Makes it extremely obnoxious when you're playing any sort of any sort of like a FromSoft game because you know holding down one of the analog sticks or joysticks will make you jump constantly at points that you don't want to, and that has was maybe extremely annoying when it came to playing Dark Souls 3 especially. It's pretty much always uh, just constantly jumping into enemies when I'm just meaning to give them a good smack there. It's also something that I'm feeling now that I'm playing Celeste again because it's, it's not so much like an issue with the controller but that I am like my arms lock in place and <laughs> tense up then it's like after a short amount of time of playing it just feels like I am like I've been trying to do some sort of uh, extremely terrible workout with the sort of muscle fatigue that I'm getting there I didn't think that he would have been able to hit me that accurately but uh, it happened anyway boy Celeste let me tell you Dead Cells is a hard game. It is a very difficult game, and I think we all know that. We all love it for it and all that, but oh, at least there are points in times in time where you're just kind of walking around, getting to the next area. You're not always 100% going at it with enemies. That game, as much as I love it, as much as I've been enjoying it, oh boy, it just never ever lets up. And it's and you know, hey, that does uh that's a good thing and a bad thing, after all, because unlike if you're made, if you're playing something like a, a, I don't know, Mario hack or something, that's some difficult platforming. But at least the the death animation is long-ish. Rechoosing to go back into the level, but like with Celeste, it's seconds before you start again. And that's one of the most ridiculous things to complain about. Of course, you can always take a. Of course, I want it to be as fast as possible, but it, it's like, man, I don't know. It just wears on my mentality more than anything. Which is one of the reasons why I've taken so long to try to finish up that game, despite otherwise playing through the entire thing, the entire uh, non-extra content last year. Ah, man, that was maybe not the best. Oh, well. I... Whatever the legendary weapon was, there's also a good chance that it wasn't going to be a Valmont's Whip anyway. And that wouldn't have uh, taken it for the run regardless. Yeah, another good time where you're actually seeing just how much faster this weapon is. Now, is the damage really amazing? I don't know. But, hey, it's there. It's kind of doing it. Still locking me in place uh, enough that I am getting hit a couple times here. Do have to remember one of the one of the many downsides of using a survival weapon is that you do tend to leave yourself vulnerable when you're swinging the weapon. I mean, there's good reason why enemy uh, enemies can't interrupt your swings. Is a uh, huh. I'm not going to use it, but I am going to take it for the stats. That's, uh, well, ain't that a thing. Yeah, I don't have anything else to get. No, no, okay. Yeah, last thing was Adrenaline and Frenzy. Another, uh, somewhat maligned couple of mutations, at least by me. I still don't think the damage is good enough to take those most of the time, but... I don't know, once again, I do like doing redemption arcs, and there's a good chance that maybe trying to use those for a run soon enough will will be in the cards. I don't know, we'll see. That said, the poison here is still doing good, especially considering that this is one of my more powerful... Really? You didn't go down there? Especially considering that this is one of the more powerful whips that I've gotten so far, so why not use it? 
And also, as of right now, I'm going fast enough that the whole invisibility necklace is not actually doing me any good. Wow, that was that would have been a bad hit. A good snipe by the uh, by the pirate captain, but a bad hit on my part. Something that there we go. Starting to get worse and worse over time when it comes to nailing these criticals. A bad sign for the future. <laughs> But, uh, who knows, who knows, maybe it'll be totally okay regardless. Uh, I don't know. Definitely a good synergy, looking at that last whip there, would be to get some sort of like a... Oh, come on now. Would be to get some sort of a freezing, whether it's a frost blast, which you can just... Which you don't necessarily need to have synergize with your stat build... With your stats in any way. I mean, freezing is freezing. One of the things that always made Ice Bow very good back in the day. But yeah, 175% damage, a pretty big four times critical. I could see that being good. Of course. I could see that being quite good synergy, but hey, that's also the whole thing where how much damage do you really need? A question that I've been grappling with a lot more recently, as I've been considering more and more uh, what? How much damage is too much damage? How much damage is putting yourself in a bad position? Because I know that there is a biter coming here. Okay. There. That'll do it. Uh, yeah, how much damage is too much damage? How much damage is sacrificing health for an unimportant amount of gain? Oh, Nelly. Do, I'm going to have to watch out for the bombers as well here. But as of right now, I'm still thinking that the amount of damage that I'm getting is probably not as good. As good as it could be. I still wasn't hitting the boss damage cap on the concierge, I think. It's kind of hard to tell. I don't know, like, what the, the boss health counts are for each level of difficulty, after all. I'm bad with numbers, but you don't have to, you don't have, to have me tell you that. I'm good with how a weapon feels. <laughs> I'm bad with how a weapon actually objectively does when it comes to a uh, a run. 30 points in any stat feels like a good amount. Is it actually a good amount? Uh, is it too much? Could I do better? Who knows? Maybe it's something that I should think about. Or maybe, I don't know, whatever. Which, let's be honest here, was always going to be the outcome. I don't know, whatever, is what I'm saying. And... If I could have comboed together that hit there, that would have been... Hit. Nope. That would have been pretty nice too, but as it is, I think it's still... Still enough that... I, I want to say like 20? 20 is going to be good for this particular run, if I can get up to about that stat count. Because then Necromancy will be... Ooh, another legendary item. And, ah, Box Elite. That's bad. Also, just in general, not a very good place to be fighting them, but hey, got him down pretty well regardless. Ha! That's funny. But, uh, no. Uh, 150... Ta -ta. Sure, I guess. I'll just go for some straight damage. I know the poison has been pretty good, but I don't think that it's so good that I need to... That I need to prioritize uh, having that thing with poison on it just because I'm getting a little bit of extra damage over time. There we go. Very nice. And the explosion into... Hmm. And the explosion into ice is not bad either. Can give me a little bit of extra crowd control, even though I don't know if I. Oh boy. Even though I don't know if I necessarily need it a lot right now. Well, maybe. I mean, it's certainly doing well against those guys. It's unfortunate that I wasn't able to get out of that without getting hit, because that would have given me a good head start to potentially getting the. 
to potentially getting the uh, 60 kill door. And I say potentially because I really don't think it was going to happen. Mm hmm. I am taking a lot of damage here, and that's only a single stat, so I'm not going to. I mean, I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't tempted, though, so. I. That I. You know. What the? I didn't know. Why was he going to try to hit me through that door? I didn't think that was. <gasps> Whoa. That was a, also a bad idea. Oof. Maybe I should just get out of here. Oh, yeah. The invisibility. I forgot. <laughs> Well, I'll use that to take those guys out. But like I said, I'm going to avoid utilizing it. I just need it for the stats right now. I'm not trying to use it. The game just lo loves me so much. What can I say? It's a good feeling, but it does sometimes get in the way of creating uh, a video where I don't feel like I'm kind of cheesing out the game at all points in time. I saw you there. However, there we go. Very nice. Yeah, I saw that guy there. It's just, um, ugh. still got very close to getting hit anyway. All right, take that off. And, uh, clock tower. Sure. I, since we're already making this kind of an unusual route, why not continue on with it? Did this uh, last time, too, or on one of the streams. I don't know. All of this stuff runs together over time. <laughs> no time door, unfortunately, but I'll make do. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. As it is, though, I'm still feeling pretty good. 12,000 health is not a whole lot, but this is only two-cell mode, of course. So maybe it'll be totally fine anyway. Would also like, if I could, maybe uh, get rid of the snackless already so I can stop feeling like I am uh, doing illicit activities by using it. Certainly uh, ruining the spirit of the run. I just need those stats, man. So much extra health. Quick enemies are going to be definitely a pain to fight. I mean, as always, but especially when you're using any sort of a powerful survival weapon. Slow weapons. It's As soon as you can get used to that, you can uh, start to enjoy the myriad of... The myriad of advantages that you get for using survival... But that is a pretty big hurdle, to say the least. I mean, I always like to su suggest using survival weapons, but there is a caveat of as long as you can get a colorless weapon or something at some point in time, there's a decent amount, to, especially on higher cell difficulties, of cursed chests around that you can maybe finagle your way into getting one. And also use stuff like some of the faster survival weapons. I'm talking... Be very careful. Okay. Uh, I'm talking like getting a... I don't know. Let's say... Uh, the... The, um... God, I'm, I'm forgetting what I'm saying because I'm so stressed out there for a second. I'll uh, get something like a... Boomerang is fairly effective. That's a very fast weapon. I mean, it's so fast you can actually double tap it. It comes out instantly. However, aside from that, they really try to prevent you from using those as much as possible. I mean, stuff like the can't be interrupted by an enemy attack does make that a lot more enticing of a build now. Because even if you do get hit, if you're using something like Necromancy, you can immediately come right back from that. But I would like to say that it's not really a... An ideal sort of circumstance when you gotta use those. Hmm. Ooh. 
All right. Get down here. And there. That's the last curse chest of the entire run. So I should be on easy street from here. Still, taking those curse chests in the first place was maybe not the best idea. But I did it anyway for the... For the tension. <laughs> yeah. Oh, used to be back in the day that I would have people telling me, it's like, come on, take the curse chest. I don't care if you die. I just want to see it because it makes the run more interesting. And now you just can't get away from that. The stats are so good. I mean, stats, of course, you know, stack in a very uh, big multiplica multiplicative way. I don't know why I stumbled over that word so much, but hey, it is early in the morning here, so I'm not, I don't really have my usual uh, level of excitement, or I don't know, something. What would you consider me as usually having for a level in commentary? Uh, aloofness, I guess? Certainly, when I'm getting hit all, the, all this amount of times, it doesn't really feel like I'm paying attention, and especially if I'm spending time just talking about Celeste. I don't know. Well, anyway, let's continue. <laughs> Still, I mean, I guess you know, it's just a more powerful whip. That's all you're. That's all I'm really looking for. It's all I can really hope for at this point in time. Also, hitting the criticals a little bit more consistently when it comes to fighting the cannibals, but that's, uh, hitting criticals a little bit more consistently when fighting anything is going to be a good idea. Uh, 60 kill door is definitely just a pipe dream at this point. Not, that's not going to be happening in any way. Uh, 15%, etc. and so on. Yeah, sure. Maybe I can get some good stuff out of that, who knows. I mean, this is certainly a decent run. I, If I was using the invisibility, it would be even better, but as it is, it's not too bad at all. I mean, damage has been nice uh, going through some of the... Well, now i got to go back and fight these guys just to make up for the fact that I did accidentally use the invisibility there. Come on. But, uh... Yes, yes, and the invisibility would make that very good and everything. I don't know. It's just taking a faster route, I think, is um, making this pretty nice. Because not going through the ossuary not, and then going through the clock tower here it tends to be faster than Sepulchre and the other one. Sepulchre and, like, prison depths and everything like that. So... Hey, I'm actually starting to hit. go back to the old school days of not an hour and a half for each one run of these. I love you, Dead Cells, but oh boy. There were people complaining when, uh... There were people complaining when uh, Enter the Gungeons runs were taking like 40 minutes each, and it's like, oh, oh, you don't even know. Still gotta go back and at some point in time do... The farewell to arms update stuff with that. Something I've been putting off for a really long time. I mean, I do like that game and everything. It's just... I don't know. After getting 100% the first time, I just kind of felt like, eh, yeah. It's, uh... I'm done. <laughs> I have accomplished what I was going to do in there. Got all my sick chivos for the cool guy gamer points that you tend to get. Okay. And by 10 to get, I mean you do. How is that not a... Well, it's too close, but I can't really get too much farther away from Mr. Archerman. Oh, well. I mean, really just getting a different necklace is the ultimate goal of fighting this guy. And hopefully this will be... Ah. Obviously not a problem when it comes to bosses, but... When it comes to mini-bosses, sometimes you don't really have a good enough area to even make getting the critical possible. And that is frustrating. Alright, the last place I looked, finally got the key here. That only took the 
like far longer than it probably should have. I found the exit. Ugh, I also see there's a stat holding guy there. But uh, yeah, I found the exit pretty early, but then find the key just took far too long. And there we go. Currently looking at 18 for survival. Yeah, the different pickups on items and necklaces and everything like that. Kind of messed around with my general status right now. Not really the ideal circumstance, but... I mean, I'd like to be over 20 right now, but... Hey, by the time I get to the palace, that should be a possibility. Hopefully. We'll see, I suppose. As it is, I do actually have Poison Synergy, despite kind of actively not going for it. Oh well, I, it'll make this fight easier, certainly. Let's take a look. Just gotta remember to hit her with the second whip, then hit her with the first whip. Yeah, damage isn't bad. I want to say that I am, in fact, going up against the cap. And there goes my chances at getting a perfect fight, but that's fine. Oh, well, at least the necklace actually giving me the big cl uh, poison cloud is also helping out, giving me a number of chances to get my synergies up. In fact, I might just go over here and take a hit anyway, just for... Well, not a hit like that. At least that wasn't the intent. Alright, come on now. <sighs> Getting hit in such a stupid way here. Two... Eh, not going for the third one there. Hey... Of course, a very fast boss like this one definitely is not going to be making this easy for me in any way. Uh, well, good enough. Also, hey, did you check that uh, cool potion usage? Was very close. Uninterruptible attacks, maybe, uh, would have been nice there, but that's fine. I mean, wasn't, it wasn't the best fight, but it was good enough. It was good enough for what I, I needed it to be, which is to say, uh, not dying. <laughs> and potion charge, uh, losing out on potion charge isn't the best, but I, I don't know. I'm hoping that I probably won't need all of my potion charges in the final fight anyway. Mm, we'll see. We'll see how that works out in practice. As it is, Necromancy only giving me half a percent right now. Well, they really, really nerfed that, didn't they? But, uh, that's, that's fine. That's fine. It's still something. I mean, I know that it's a good, uh, take and everything, but, man. Just right into the ground, you know? And, okay, what do we got here? Money, hopefully, because food isn't going to be doing me any good with the whole lack of healing that I can get off of that because of dead inside. Ugh, this is a very risky proposition. Risky business going on here, but hey, if I can manage to get a decent amount of healing off just by killing a few characters here. That's going to be worth it. Okay. See, I'm already back up to like uh, half my health here. So, it's 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 going okay. Now, this might be a bit more of an issue. Ugh, this is actually an... I mean, it's frustrating because usually the... Well, that was annoying. Because usually the normal way you think about fighting an enemy like this is to get up nice and close to them. It's far easier to dodge them when they're doing the kick attack. But, uh... Well... 
This weapon kind of requires that you do it a bit differently. Projectile damage reduction I'll take, because I do think I am going to be taking a lot of damage from that. Okay, good. Was hoping to get these guys to hit the spikes there, since bombers might have the ability to fly through the air, but they don't have the ability to not get absolutely murdered by spikes. Which I am not going to be complaining about at all. Uh, and these guys are far too fast to get hit by the critical most of the time. Yeah, I do think that, uh, like I was saying, late game starting to lose a little bit of luster on the weapon. It's been pretty good so far, but... The expediency that I've been experiencing with the run has mostly due to been due to the route that I'm taking, and not necessarily that the weapon is particularly amazing. Okay, and it hit me anyway. That's fine, that's fine. Yeah, I do think that this is definitely one of the ones where... Just hit him. <laughs> Man. This is definitely one of the runs where doing this on two-cell mode was pretty much the ideal difficulty. Any more than this, and it would have been getting quite hairy. So overall, it's like, would I say that this is a weapon that's, you know, been redeemed in my eyes or anything? I don't know. I would probably err on the side of it's not as good... It's not, like, uh, gonna be my favorite weapon. I mean, I suppose it's okay, but... It's still a little bit difficult to get the critical. I do like the fact that it's faster. I don't know. I don't think this one is gonna quite get the same sort of redemption arc as some of the, the other weapons here. Oh, we still got time. We still got, uh, one fairly difficult boss coming up here as well. I suppose we'll see kind of how that shakes out as we get close to the end. All right, let's continue down here. I suppose I might as well go for all three keys and probably try to pile into getting a bit more. Yeah, sure. And probably try to pile into getting a bit more health comparatively. Although I am switching out more and more of my stats for other stuff. Only at 17 survival right now, so maybe it might be worth just going right back to piling it all into survival. We'll see what the... I mean, you never get too many stats in the castle after all. And mostly the, one, the only one that you know that you have guaranteed is getting the three keys. And right into the spikes there. He's so mobile. Oh, that's frustrating. Because I'm... Because it's not like I'm going to be getting any more potions at this point in time. As much as I would like to. Because the boss cell difficulty was introduced before the hand was, so... For some reason it just became canonical that you don't get a health refill... ...before that particular fight. Okay, well, Thorny's gonna be easy to fight here. Uh, goes right through the weapon I got, goes right through the shield. He is going to be very effective just in that sense alone. Oh, uh, not supposed to be hitting enemies with that. But yeah, enemies do not teleport after me, so... I guess I might as well... Yeah, just go right for it. <laughs> in fact, in general, I was very close to getting hit by that ball and chain. But also, I can just kind of run past everything here. Finally go do some old school tactics rather than worrying about uh, hitting every single enemy as you normally would. Because I mean, it's much more important when it comes to... Oh, I could just actually just... I could actually just finish the run right now, eh? Yeah, sure. I'll give her an attempt. <laughs> I feel like it's not going to be too much, um... I'm not going to be getting too much more beefy as of right now. I can just, uh... Kind of end this one in style. Now, necromancy is not going to be helping me out too much here. However, let's take you... You. 
and instead extended healing. Big DPS increase. Yeah, like a, well, it's, I guess it's only like a 10% increase, but also it heals 85%. So that's actually kind of useful. I mean, the, the extra healing means that if I do have to use my potion charges, I'm going to be getting a lot more use out of them. Now, that does mean that I'm going to have to use it in a way where I'm not going to be getting hit for a while to actually utilize that health, but I don't know. Maybe it's not going to be too bad. I don't know. I feel like in some of the single weapon runs, I've had better damage here. <laughs> Projectiles uh, kind of screwing me up there. And... There we go. Oh, it is going to be impossible to get a critical on that guy there. Mm, could also be just be the route that I took did give me less stats just in general. At the same time, the damage is pretty all right here. This has been a pretty expedient run, so it's not like unsuccessful. All right. Two, three. One, uh, two, three. Ah. Well, that was actually a pretty cool launch, but that's not what I'm, you know, trying to do here. Go for cool launches. I mean, if I was in a... I was trying to, like... Okay, now this is about the point in time that we're going to want to do this, and continue. Alright. But yeah, no, it seems like I can definitely uh, get to the point where I'm not really taking too much damage to get the full usage out of my extended healing. And that worm just jumped right off the edge, didn't he? Okay, get the critical. After all, the Inquisitor up there is going to be taking a lot of damage when it uh, falls off when the phase ends here, which you can see rapidly happening right now. Now it wasn't even that big a deal. Okay. Right, all right. Ah, right into the drink, eh? Kind of surprised that he hasn't been uh, going for the big attack just yet. I suppose that's probably coming up right now. No? Okay. Ugh. I mean, this is his third phase, after all. Maybe it's based on health or something? Because generally... Ah, oh, here we go. Generally, I don't even think about, like, hearing this part of the song when I'm fighting against Anne of the King. Had a very similar sort of, uh, battle in 5-cell mode recently. Okay. And one more... Well, I do have the heart, after all, so I am probably going to utilize that if the time requires. And there we go. Ugh, a little bit closer than usual, but um, managed it okay anyway, which I'm happy about that. So yeah, like I was saying in the in the castle there, uh, it's it's okay, I guess. I still don't think that the Valmont's Whip is ever going to be my favorite weapon. But hey, at least it was good getting a run using it.